Today we're going to talk about the G-Charger that comes on a new Volkswagen Corrado. We'll talk about the operation of the G-Charger and how to check the G-Charger's output. The G-Charger is driven via the crankshaft by a polyrib belt. An automatic belt tensioner is used to ensure proper belt tension. Special tool 3191 is needed to remove and install the polyrib belt. Let's take a look at how a G-Charger works. The G-Charger works like an air pump. A displacer moves air around inside the spiral-shaped housings to compress and move the air. Two eccentric shafts are used in the G-Charger. One shaft supports and drives the displacer. The other is used to keep the displacer from rotating. A tooth belt keeps the two shafts in phase with each other. As the eccentric shafts rotate, the displacer is moved in a circular motion. This motion compresses the air. The compressed air is then channeled into the intercooler, which is located below the left headlight. The intercooler is used to cool the heated, pressurized air leaving the G-Charger. The heated air is directed through the cooling tubes with cooling fins, where it is cooled down by as much as 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The cooled air is more dense, which in turn helps boost the engine's output and at the same time reduces the chance of knock. The cooled air is then directed past the CO potentiometer and the air temperature sensor, and then into the engine's intake manifold via the throttle valve. Since the G-Charger produces more boost than the engine can utilize at lower speeds, excess boost pressure is controlled by a mechanically operated boost control valve and the idle stabilizer. The mechanical boost control valve is located here on the throttle valve housing. It is operated by the throttle linkage. The boost control valve linkage is located on the underside of the throttle valve housing. It is adjusted at the factory. Before making any attempts to adjust the linkage, make sure you refer to the repair information system for details. The boost control valve moves in the opposite direction of the throttle valve. Here's what happens. At idle and part throttle, the mechanical boost control valve is open. Most of the boost pressure is directed back to the intake side of the G-Charger. The mechanical boost control valve closes approximately five degrees before full throttle. Boost pressure now flows directly into the intake manifold for maximum engine performance. If the boost pressure rises above 0.8 bar, the idle stabilizer will open and vent excess boost pressure to the intake side of the G-Charger. This completes the boost cycle. Lubrication for the G-Charger is supplied through this line coming from the 0.3 bar oil pressure switch on a cylinder head. Oil pressure needed to properly lubricate the G-Charger is approximately 0.3 bar. Oil pressure to the G-Charger is regulated by the length and the inside diameter of the oil supply line. Excess oil is returned to the engine crankcase via oil return line. This return line is attached to the bottom of the G-Charger and the engine crankcase near the oil filter. Now that we've talked about the operation of the G-Charger, let's see what's involved in checking the G-Charger's output. Now to do this, we'll need to locate the pressure gauge VW1397. Now this is the same gauge you use to check the boost pressure on the turbo diesel Jetta models. Before making any boost pressure checks, make sure that the basic engine settings are correct, the idle setting and the knock sensor are okay, and that the engine is fully warmed. With the engine off, connect the gauge to the vacuum line for the fuel pressure regulator by using a T adapter. Always use hose clamps. The gauge is in the open position when the sliding valve is pushed toward the gauge. Leave the gauge in the open position for the test. With the gauge installed, start the engine and let it run at idle.
To keep the engine from surging rapidly when the engine rev limiter kicks in, remove the harness connectors from both the coolant temperature sensor and the CO potentiometer. Removing these connectors will cause the engine to surge at a slower rate. The Digifont ECU should prevent the engine from over revving. Now with the gauge connected and the two harness plugs off, twist the throttle rapidly to full throttle and read the gauge. Look to see that the highest boost pressure reached is at least 0.6 bar, then let the engine return to idle. Engine surging during this test is normal. With the test complete, reconnect both harness connectors and remove the gauge. If after performing the boost pressure checks and you find out that the boost pressure was not at least 0.6 bar, you'll have to make other checks before deciding to replace the G-charger. Check for an air leak in the intake air system or a boost control valve that doesn't close completely or an idle stabilizer that's not functioning properly. Refer to the repair manual information system for further details. Well, that about does it. Things to remember are, when checking G-Charger output, make sure the engine is fully warmed before performing boost pressure testing. Make sure that the basic engine settings are correct and the knock sensor is functioning correctly. Remember to always use hose clamps when connecting the boost pressure gauge VW1397. Make sure that the gauge is open. With the engine at idle, Remove the harness connectors for the blue coolant temperature sensor plug and the CO potentiometer. Make sure that the throttle is open fully. Check the boost pressure reading. And when the test is complete, reconnect the harness connectors and remove the gauge. Following these procedures should help ensure that the vehicle is fixed right the first time and that the customer is satisfied.